Hello. I'm just about to do some very simple, straightforward pinch pot animals. Um, just for fun, something you can do with the kids. Um, they can turn out really good and you can do them with... I'm going to use paintbrush. With You could use just water on it. I've got some slip, but that's only because I keep on putting lumps of little bits of clay into water. Um, and a teaspoon and a knife. Of course you don't actually have a knife handy but we won't worry about that. Right so <laughs> this is Wadgie. <laughs> Wadgie decided that she would um, like to keep me company and take up most of my desk and is unwilling to move so we're just gonna leave her and work around her. So this is the sort of thing that I'm going to make. So I have to wait for it to catch up with me. So yeah, so let's get some beer. See bunny? There you go. Floppy ears. Little tail bunny. So we're gonna make a bunny, a cat, and chicken. Cat's not particularly Easter, but chickens and bunnies are. So say hi. Right. So first I start off with a kind of egg shaped bit of clay. It's actually a bit big. I might make it a little bit smaller but we'll see. Um, and I try and start with the shape that I intend to end up with. Um, and I'm going to make a double pinch pot which means it's going to be hollow. Um, and this makes it easy to, um, it gives it a little bit of lightness to it once it's actually finished instead of being a solid lump of clay it'll take less time to dry than a solid lump of clay and when I make it a double pinch pot I trap the air inside while I'm working with it and it gives a little bit of stability to it so it won't collapse in because I'm working with quite wet clay as you can see. So let's smack that into place. So I would use a knife to cut it in half, try and cut it down the middle. I'm going to use my spoon. There you go. First use of teaspoon. And then I'm going to pinch each side into a pot. So I start in the middle and I kind of do that and then I start pushing out all the way around. You're not in the way or anything like that are you? Okay so it's about, I don't know, Centimetre thick, centimetre and a bit. Ah, I'm terrible with measurements. It's about that thick, all the way around. So you've got like half an egg shape. I'm going to do the same with the other side. Pinch up the middle and then start pinching out. Pinch the bottom, pinch the sides. I have to quite often use both hands. And you want something that's fairly similar. Mine's a bit elongated on one side. That's not too bad. I think this one just needs a little bit more. Ooh, where are you going? Pinching in the middle. Oh, we're just moving, are we? Should I just block the light too? Okay, so they're similar sizes. Can join them together. So I'm gonna get my paintbrush. I'm just going to. It's quite a hard little paintbrush, so it does put score marks on it, which is good. If not, you could use a fork, um, a toothpick, and then just brush the water on with a softer brush. Thanks. So I try and line the sides up. They don't have to be perfect because you're going to smoosh them together. So I'll just gently press them together. And then you can use your fingers or you can use your spoon. And just get rid of your crease. Now I've got a video up here already on how to make this. So just feel free to watch either one. So basically we're getting rid of the seam all the way around. Right, I'm going to use the back of my spoon 
to flatten that seam so it's not a ridge or a dimple. <laughs> oh, now I've got another light. There you go. Got another light on. Because why do you sit right in front of the other one? Hopefully you'll be able to see. So use it to smooth like a wadgy. Alright, madam, you have to go. I'm terribly sorry. Over on the bed. Go on, scoot. Right, so use your fingers. Because that air is trapped inside there, it doesn't flatten it when you're beating it up. So I want an egg shape and I want it with a flat base. So I'm going to dunk it. So there you go. So that's your body. So I'm going to do it to the other bits, but I won't talk so much and I'll just do it. But basically I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to cut it in the middle and pinching them into two pots. So say hi. Um, tell me where you are. Tell me where you're watching from today. This was very impromptu. So if nobody's watching, then I'm not worried. I'll be saving it on the, the site. It was just a bit fun. No, no, no. Ah, stay off. No. Madam is absolutely determined to get up on the desk for some reason. Which normally I wouldn't worry about it, but I just made a cockerel. Can you see my cockerel on the background? Let's see if I can see it. Sorry, my screen is 20 seconds behind. There we go. I made a cockerel. So I'm concerned that um, she keeps on jumping over him and on him and his tails are a little, tail is a bit de delicate at the moment. Hi Kay in Dumfries. Right, so that's it. A little bit of liquid, a little bit of scoring. And that was a funky shape, but we just get a spoon, get rid of that join, trap the air inside. My clay is quite wet. If you use dry clay, you might want to use more slip and more scoring, but I'll say mine's quite soft. So, and you can use your hands and squeeze it into shape. Okay. And just use fingers, get rid of dints. dump it so it's got a nice flat base. Number two. Right. I'm making three because I'm making a showing you how you can change one into a chicken, one into a cat and one into a bunny. So. And basically I am just Pinching quite quickly and rapidly just to thin out the clay. There we go. I try and line them up fairly one on top of the other. Just fill in that gap. And at the end, I put a hole in them. Um, you don't need to put a hole in them, but I like to put a hole in them so that the air gets inside and dries quicker. Because it's one of the problems I have in Scotland is getting things dry. We've got quite a humid, uh, no pottery tools at all. We've got quite a humid, um, climate up in Aberdeenshire so I find that it takes ages for things to dry and people oh how long does it take and I'm going about a month <laughs> especially when I'm doing hollow items okay so that's my three 
bodies. Oh, and I don't think I left a bit of clay for doing this. So let's get grab another bit of clay. Chunk of clay. Right. So, which one will I do first? Bunny first, I think. So, thing that makes a bunny a bunny is ears. So I'm going to roll a sausage and hopefully a sausage of a similar size and then I'm going to take the end of my spoon and put a little bit of a gap so I can get my thumb in and I'm going to pinch make it rounded at the end pinch two ears. So just pinch it, leave a little bit of a stop bit at the end. So it's like pea pods. So all the way up, a hole, take some of the clay off that and put it back with the other clay. And thumb in, pinch, thumb in, pinch. Bunny ears. Okay, so this is going to be our bunny and you can make it as minimalistic as you want. It can just have eyes and ears and it will still look like a bunny. So we'll do that first so you can see. So up near the top, find out where you're going to put your eyes and just twist them on. Right, and I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush and put little dints in them, like reverse eyeballs. So if you add them, it's going to look like a bunny. Probably needs nose to make it more bunny-like. So we're going to do a kind of upside down triangle. I'm going to put a little bit of score edge and slip and we're going to put it somewhere between and then I'm going to use the end of the spoon and just go around the side of the nose and squish some of it in. So, and then we're going to use that to put nostrils in and then the end of the spoon we're going to put a little curve in for the bunny round close the curve in and again with the end of your paintbrush a couple of dints there that's basically bunny just need to do ears now so bunny ears you can have ears standing up like that. Can ears curling down, can ears going, you can do ears any way you want. So I'm going to put a little bit of slippage on there, not much. And then I'm going to press my bunny ears in and then I'm going to use the end of my spoon. Now my clay is a bit soft so I'm going to do a little bit of a coil, just a little sausage and I'm going to put it around the back of the bunny ears and I'm going to press it in to the head and to the ears and that should hopefully help them stay upright. Hopefully. Same with the other side. I think that's the top of the year. No, I think that's the top of the year. Okay. So I'm going to do the other one. Try and make it more standy up. A little bit of a coil. Roll it out in your hand. Wrap it around the ear. Then use the end of your spoon to do the half into the body, the bottom half into the body. 
from the top half into the ear. Turn round, we do that side. Okay, so it's kind of funny. I think he needs a little bit more of that curvy bit at the end, so he looks like he's smiling. The other thing to use is maybe use the end of your paintbrush and try not to attach it to your hair, Caroline. Okay, you got a smiling bunny. And that could be your bunny. So I'm going to add a couple more things to him. So I'm going to give him a couple of feet. So I'm going to make a kind of sausage. I'm going to flatten one end. And and so I'm going to make two of those. So yeah. Circle, sausage. I want them vaguely the same size. So. Okay, and then take the end of your spoon. Keep cleaning it off so you don't get dry clay. And you put C marks in there. One, two, three. A little bit of slip on the end. A little bit of slip on the end, and I think to put them under bunny. There. I'll press them in and then smooth the back part into the base of your bunny. Okay, bunny feet. Bunny needs a tail. Well, my bunny needs a tail. Just going to make a round circle. Uh, flatten one end of it, so a little bit of slip on that, and we're going to take the bunny and we're going to twist it into place and flatten it. Bunny tail! Right, you can leave bunny like that, or you can put some hair on him, or you can give him a fringe. I'll just do a couple of Coils, a little bit of slip, and then you can give Bunny a funky fringe. That's fringe, and I'm just going to smooth the back of it, hold it in place, and like that. Now, as my thing is quite rough. You can go over it and you can give Bunny a bit of texture, like that. Or you could use the other side, the end of the paintbrush, and you could give Bunny hair like this. Just gentle digs in. Now it doesn't have to be all over, it doesn't have to be close, it can just be vague hints of hair, clean off any excess. Make sure I keep on rubbing the wet end of the paintbrush into my hair. <laughs> but then I'm a potter. I've always got clay somewhere about me, even when I haven't touched it in days. So. A few people watching, so this would be a great one to do with kids. I can decorate their bunny any way they want. A couple of dots at the end, and we have Mr. Bunny. Okay. So that's a bunny. So chicken. Chicken is even simpler. So two round balls for the eyes. Trying to get them a similar size. Okay. Like that. 
twist, keep twisting until you think they're attached. Okay, see at the end, clean it off first, you know, all the excess clay, get a couple of holes in them. Okay, then we'll make a beak, which is slightly pointy and slightly hooked. So a bit like that. So I rolled it into a ball, then rolled one end thinner and then flattened out. So a little bit of this. I'll put again, twist it. Okay, and then we're gonna have two. Oh, I never remember the names and it doesn't matter how many times friends tell me what they're called I forget when I'm doing a video what these bits are called so so it's a kind of teardrop shape and you need two of those and you're going to put them either side of the beak okay and now he needs the comb at the top so we're going to get a ball and we're going to flatten it and then we're going to use our fingers and pinch it into points like that and we'll flat one end and we're going to slip and score it and we're going to use your spoon and we're going to push it into place Okay, one side, other side, maybe a little bit of the front, a little bit back, okay, and you could leave him like that, I think he looks pretty damn chicken at the moment. I'm going to use the end of the spoon and do a line on either side of his beak. Um, you're going to do feet, you can do one coil, one long coil, one short coil, uh, a little bit of slip in the middle, and then you're going to put the short coil there and you're going to curve round. Okay, that's one. Same again. Long coil, short coil. I'm not going to slip it this time because it's actually quite wet. So I'm just going to pinch it together, flatten it. So we've got two feet, a little bit slip. And we're going to press them under. I'm just going to press the back bit in. And a bit of a dent. Okay, like chicken feet and chicken wings. So we're going to do a ball and I'm going to fin it on one side so it's that kind of shape and then I'm going to flatten it out. So I'm going to do two second ball, fin it on one end, flatten it out. Uh, you can do it where you can cut them and make them the same size, but I'm not that bothered. I'm going to use my end of my spoon to put some detail in it. And I'm going to put some slip on it. And I'm going to put the pointy end towards the front of the chicken. And push it on. Again with the other side, a little bit of slip, a little bit of scoring. Figure out where that one is, probably a finger between the wattle I think it is and that. So same on the other side, finger. And put that in. There we go, one chicken. So that's the chicken. Again, you can put lots more texture on it. You don't have to leave them like that. Finally, Pussycat. So, 
two balls for eyes again. Roughly the same size. So find somewhere to put the eyes. Twist them. Twist them. And hold in the first part of the cat. Um, the second part is a nose and it has a similar nose to the bunny, maybe more of a triangle than the bunny. So I'm going to put a little bit of slip on there. And I'm going to put more nose on. I do ones with hearts, so push it into place. And then we're going to get, I'm going to put the cheeks in. So it's just a round ball, squish flat. One ball squished flat, roughly the same size. I'm going to put a little bit of slip on one side. And we're going to press that into place. And we're going to press that into place. Okay. I'm going to put these ends of the spool to make a wee bit of the mouth. And the end of the paintbrush to put some holes in. And it kind of looks like you can also put whiskers in like that, which is just the end. And it kind of looks like a cat, but what's missing? Two things ears and a tail. So, ears for a cat. I like quite big ears, so I'm going to make two balls roughly the same size. And I'm going to flatten them and make them pointy. And I'm going to use my finger and press into it, make them hollow and still pointy. So one ear. Again. Push in like that. So we've got a flat end and a pointy end, and we're going to find somewhere on the top of the cat, and we're going to put ears on. We'll put ears on. Use the end of the spoon to attach it. End of the spoon or your fingers. I'm going to do my coil trick around the back just to make sure that they've got really good attachment. I'm going to smooth the top half into the ear and the bottom half into the head. Using the end of the spoon. Okay. Same with the other side. Okay. So, finally, well, just about finally, I'm probably going to put some texture on the cat just for the hell of it. I'm going to roll a long coil out and I'm going to make it slightly pointier at one end and I'm going to make one side of it wet. Okay, so we're going to take, I'm going to attach it at the back and we're going to roll it around the side and we're going to smooth the back bit onto the body and we're going to press the rest of it on so we have a tail. And do we want to put feet in? We could put little paws in. The cats have got more rounded paws than rabbits, so we could just do a ball, flatten it. Do your bit. Ball. 
on it with single sizes. Do oh, okay. Get my mouse big on that side. There we go. A little bit of slip, a little bit of slip. I'm going to attach it on the smooth bottom end into the body. Attach it. Smooth the bottom end into the body. Done it a couple of times. There we go, pussycat. You can use, you can make your cat hairy and just use the end of the spoon and give him a load of fur, some at the top. So coming out of these. All the way around. Okay, so if you've got a cocktail soup or use the end of your paintbrush, put a hole in it, and I put my name on it, so I'm just going to use the end of the paintbrush to push in my ZC. That is the cat finish. Okay, I'm gonna do the same with the bunny. And put a hole just underneath the tail. I was airing my name on it. So, bunny, pussy cat. Mm. Oh, you can also put tail feathers on your chicken, but you don't have to. I'm going to put a couple of tail feathers on mine just so you can see. So, just because everybody else has got something. Bunny's got a tail, cat's got a tail. So, short coils. Flatten them out. Maybe put a little bit of texture on them. That's got a little bit of thicker stuff, a little bit of texture. It's just the end of the spoon. Oops. Take. Put a little bit of slippage on there, and we're going to shoot one, two. You bend the end a little bit. A little bit of slip on there, and that'll be the third one. And smooth bottom down. There we go. Chicken finished. There we go. Let's see if we can see. Get your how's that? So simple, effective, fun little project to do with your kids at um, Easter time. Let's make some bunnies, some cats and some chickens. I hope you enjoyed that um, and if you do make some please share it with the group especially if your kids manage to make some because that would be dead good fun. All right bye for now.